lot of questions regarding Imam Mahdi and, and uh, the, the Dajjal energies and the Dajjal movement upon this earth and, and the just of that is that we have to bring that reality into ourself and to make ourselves from that reality. Otherwise all the locations in the world and understanding this location, that location, nothing saves us but the good character that we put upon ourselves. that Allah by virtue of those realities dresses the servant and grants them a protection inshaAllah. Do you have any, any questions for tonight? Um, say this a few personal ones. Personal questions? Yeah, they're probably better for the email. Yeah, better that the, anyone has a question that, that would be more of a personal nature than help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah on specific issues of, of uh, that they would be related to only their person and not to a general question on the meditation, on the, on the practices, on, on the wazifas and nothing else? Um, 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 As Salaamu Sayyidi, is it possible, is it possible, is it possible, is it possible that, one that one is facing difficulties often due to not having a strong connection with the shaykh? The question was, is it, is it possible that one faces lots of difficulties because they don't have a strong connection with the shaykh? Alaykum As Salaam inshaAllah that, that, that always can be a possibility that uh, the connection and say that why Allah for Nabi Musa appeared as a burning bush and had Nabi Musa not been in a condition of cold he probably wouldn't be looking for a burning bush. Had he been hot I think the last thing he would want to approach was something hot and for us is the symbolism that for every condition that we're in Allah has an opening. Many people are in difficult conditions and Allah's granting an opening that go to these shaykhs. So they become like a door in which most in, in their time of life would not search for, for a reality, a solution, a group of people who are maybe more in love with Sayyidina Muhammad than themselves. Whatever they, they were perceiving they probably wouldn't have looked for that without the difficulty that has come into their lives. So for many it's an opening towards a door. Now once they enter into that presence, enter into those associations, for them to have continued difficulties and for many that we've talked to and given advice, yes they didn't actually take the practices. On, they never tell you that too, they just keep saying, oh what I'm doing is so many difficulties coming, so many difficulties, so many. and then you talk to them later and communicate, not talk to them by, by phone because we don't take phone calls. A lot of people ask and we have a WhatsApp and make a phone call with you. Can you imagine thousands of phone calls, we would just have to have a switchboard all day and night, 24 hours a day taking phone calls. The easiest way is, is through the email because there are people who can filter it and, and, and give us something so that we can respond to. So there's a whole system that's been built into it. But the understanding was that as soon as you communicate with the people, they will oh, actually shake it, you know I'm, I'm doing Reiki um, uh, and I'm not really doing your wazifa and my grandparents gave me these other three other things I recite. So by the time I get to those I, I don't really get to this and I'm doing this and I'm doing all these different practices. Only later they tell you that they're not really doing the Naqshbandi practices. They kind of mix and match and make their own soup. So of course it's like a doctor's office. If you go to a doctor and, and it's you know like a Harvard Med School, the highest uh, school of, of medicine and then all its accreditations and you go to that office and, and you get the advice and you walk out and don't listen to any of it. Uh, you can only blame yourself for the sicknesses and difficulties you face. 
And if you take their advice and mix it with five other doctors, a little bit from Karachi, somewhere from this one, somewhere from this one, yeah I can imagine what kind of, what kind of you know, again it becomes like a stew, just mix with everything. My grandmother said to recite this, my brother-in-law said to recite this, the mailman he came by, he gave me wazifa for this and, and then and I threw in some of the things that you said too, Shaykh. So <laughs> that, that becomes the, the difficulty. Now if you're doing all the practices and you're sticking firmly to these wazifas, you're doing the meditations, you're building your energy and, and partitioning your time to make that connection and the significant difficulty has not ceased, uh, that would be pretty uh, astonishing. So that, that is a rare, rare case. And even the ones who say, no, no I stopped everything but no they really didn't because then they go here, they go there, they don't cover, they don't keep the sunnah, they don't keep wudu, they, they eat from this, they eat from that. So there, I mean there's all these places in which difficulties are entering and into people. But the main thing is you try your best in life. And the rest is to be patient with what Allah is sending of, of whatever testing Allah is sending. So it gives us a sabr and a patience and if we have istiqam and firmness in our belief and we want to do more, we want to be vigilant in, in doing the practices then that's a grant from Allah that we become firm. Some people need outside motivational forces to make them believe unfortunately, what we call proactive and reactive, is that the correct understanding? Proactive, somebody who doesn't need any difficulty and will take all the steps necessary to make sure they're good, they're set. Reactive personality is the one who waits for something to hit them, then they say, now it's time to get up. And then when they're up they wait for another thing to hit them and they say, oh now it's time to move a little bit forward. Those types of characters are, you know, that's unfortunately, that's unfortunate that they're, they are like that. That it's better to be more that proactive, I'm going to take necessary moves so that nothing hits me, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa when a student sins in any way, does it weigh on the shaykh in a bad way? Forgive me if I ask something wrong. When the student won? When the stu when a student sins. <coughs> oh, when the student sins, does it weigh upon the shaykh in a bad way? Yay. Yeah, I mean, you know, they say, Shaykh, the students who don't like you and you say that on, on air then they all want to go and do sins thinking they're hurting you. <laughs> but that's not the reality. The reality is that it, it, it doesn't look good for the shaykh and especially if the shaykh is not teaching anything that, oh your, your students are all you know doing these crazy things, they have bad character, they're angry, they go around and, and you know exhibit. Uh, uh, a character more like a gangster than a murid, then yes, then that would uh, that would reflect upon the shaykh. So we've we've given an example. If you go into a store and you see the employees are very mean, very aggressive, and really bad character, I guarantee you the manager's bad because they're reflections of his character or her character. That the manager has a disrespect for people and an and inappropriate way to teach and as a result all of the, the lower managers are picking up that same characteristic and they put it out onto anyone who comes into the store and that's human nature. And if you go somewhere and the people are, are so polite, so kind and so loving, I can guarantee that the manager is that way. And that 100% is the case, you see the manager comes out and tries to resolve everything themselves. So same understanding that if the, if the shaykh is teaching with a good character, with love and with muhabbat and that's why it's you know 90% are not teaching muhabbat, they're teaching usul and thinking that only the Islamic laws matter but they, they didn't or they forgot that this law was supposed to lead you somewhere. The goal wasn't the Islamic law, 
The goal was that if you applied these laws on you, you would have raised yourself, your resonance and frequency and energy to the oceans of muhabbat and that's why we talked in the levels of the nafs. Levels of the nafs from five, six, seven are all Allah's oceans of muhabbat and love in which Allah addresses the soul with the reality of Divinely Names, the reality of how everything is created from love and from this ocean of love everything is manifesting. So that is important that the shaykh has to be of that character, that everything is based on love with good character and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad as a result of that then they're picking up those characteristics and that they're constantly being disciplined and taught that please have good characteristics, have good characteristics. And we talked last night that a shaykh from a distance just teaching and no interaction with people is very difficult. So in old times and not so old times you'd go to Mawlana shaykh and he has a farm and left gay and he has uh, orange fields and sheep and the products that a farm would have and everybody who came had to go out into the farm with the products that they have. So you went out into the orchard, you did your sheep, you did your grass cutting and all the other things that you do on a farm. And the interaction with that student and now the shaykhs because the shaykh had his representatives out in the field or the guy who didn't want to cut the oranges, the guy who didn't do the sheep correctly, the one who didn't want to do it. All of that interaction was a way for the student to find that their characteristics and, oh I came to sit with the shaykh and get knowledges, why am I cleaning the sheep now? So all of these were a way in which to test the student. You come to submit and you came to give your bayat, not take bayat because give means I'm going to give myself to this reality, I'm not going to take from it everything. So there was a whole reality of the turuqs, well everything shuts down and people are following from thousands of miles across, Allah opens a different way so that you interact with the center, you interact with the emails, you interact with the items that we have. We don't have oranges and sheep and, and, and hay, we have online stores and online items and merchandise and, and whatever it is that we have, charity we have, all of these things that we have, it opens for the ability to interact now with students. People get angry that well, what's like this and how come I emailed and, and nobody emailed me back. That's the equivalent of being in the, in the field and, and saying that, I didn't come here to pick oranges for you, I came here to get you know answers from you. And tariqah is, is more about it doesn't matter why you came. Whatever you came was the reason of how they brought you. But that doesn't mean that's what Allah wanted for you. Allah wanted you to be attracted to them, go towards them and now let them test you and show you what, what type of characteristics you have within yourself. Before they would come to the zikr and they would be angry that the food is late and we said many times, and you tell people, look this is not a soup kitchen, you, you'll get the food when the food is served. And all this is showing is that you're impatient and you have anger issues and that's what God wanted you to see at the zikr, that you came to remember God but you're impatient and angry. And that was the medicine, that was exactly, exactly what was needed for that servant. But they didn't pick it up and they just got angry why the food wasn't on time. So every interaction with the tariqah at any level is a test for the student. It didn't come on time, well, who cares? It's all under Allah's permission, it's testing sabr and patience. How can anything be on time in the middle of a pandemic when you can't go five feet without the doors being closed? You know people are being closed in now with police outside saying that you're not allowed to go out. So it requires immense patience for everything. And if we want Allah's nazar and we want our heart to be a Kaaba, then it has to be clean and pure. Anger is the, is the opposite of faith. Every, every instance of anger has to be destroyed until whatever sparks in that person is not from anger. Because whatever sparks of anger now is all ifrit in the air, millions of shaitans are, are in the air of people and that's why when they breathe them in they're dying. 
what you call COVID. So when these shaitans are coming and, and into people, as soon as they have this fire of anger, these shaitans completely override the person and make them to go amazingly crazy. And, and that's the danger until that's taken away and the servant's heart is a Kaaba, is the purity and the love of Allah Then Allah will open for them the sincerity of their soul to have an immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad And if they have an immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad then who do you think they would be searching for? Do you think anyone out there? who has an immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad can be fed from something other than awliyaullah? You, you, you want the most specific food Allah has created, the most specific love that Allah has created. All you want is to hear about a Muhammadan reality if you're truly in love with Prophet There's no food, there's no knowledge that can satisfy you other than those haqqaiqs and when they in that type of love they seek out awliya. So when they would sit with Shaykh Nazim the immensity of the love that would pour from his heart, the immensity of that you look at him and say that this is a reflection of Prophet and this is how I imagine Sayyidina Muhammad to be that he would be so kind and, and loving that people would be attracted by just the loving nature of that reality and that was was important. So of course the love of Allah would have guided you to love Prophet So when you see somebody is talking and he's not talking, we said now the masjids of Allah there's no more name of Muhammadun Rasulullah inside of them. There's not a masjid you go to where somebody will stand up and begin to talk about Sayyidina Muhammad Means that Ahlul Sunnah is vanishing except in certain areas in certain countries alhamdulillah. Without mentioning Prophet and without teaching about Prophet not they don't want to talk about the hadith that your head has to be covered, they don't want to talk about hadith that you have to have beard, they don't want to talk about the good character and the good love, why? Because they're not doing it. How could you talk about something to an audience that you're not doing and you don't look like it? So they're no longer Ahl hadith, they become Ahl Qur'an only. And so then 90% of the masjids just become Qur'an and the imam and the imam has no head cover, has no beard, has no, no ex- example of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and no more imamiyah, he's not representing the imam, he's not representing the image of the imam and all he won't talk about is Allah and the Qur'an. So now already we're at that stage that the Prophet described in last days that the masjids wouldn't mention me anymore. And already we're in that phase that it become less and less and less unless they're strong in tariqahs and as a result they're all strong in Ahlul Sunnah. If you look at them all of them have shaykhs and as a result as soon as they go member it's all talking about the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad And they keep the sunnah alive, they keep the love alive, they keep the reality alive and that's why they all all went and levitated to the ulul amr and to awliyaullah and to be from Ahl sham sharif inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Regarding location, should we seek to live in a location where we can practice our Islam easily? For example, in certain countries hijab is not allowed in school. Right now you can't move anywhere because of the difficulties and lockdowns and all, all the things that are coming. And in most Muslim countries they are not uh, allowing even the following of Islam. So that becomes more and more rare as far as where can somebody go to to freely practice their religion. So far the freest now is the West where we're all living, they have no intervention into the religion and people are free to to worship the way they want to worship. 
For now everything is safe wherever people are and wherever Allah has written for them to be. Where can somebody move and know if that's going to be a danger, that's going to be a difficulty. Again most Muslim countries they don't allow even the, the, the true practice of Islam anyways. You can't have a beard in some Muslim countries, you, you can't walk around with kufi and, and all your, your belief because they figure that why are you like this and why are you believing like this and why you look like this in this age. So these are very difficult times in which to, to, to find a, a, an island of, of, of peace but most important is that people find that peace within themselves. That to have their practices, their zikrs, to make their connection, to make the children to see the connection, to feel the connection, to do the zikr, that the children be raised bi ahlul dhikr when they're hearing the zikr and they're reciting and, and getting the, the you PDF the salawat book and print it out and every Thursday, Friday or Saturday or one of the nights every week have the kids sit down with the salawat book and, and make the salawat. So these lights enter into their hearts, in, into their, their being and the reality is, is more important than, than looking for a country that we can run to and you may choose the wrong one and the location and difficulty is coming to that uh, area and region. So best to for everybody to stay put until, until Allah opens and makes things more clear as far as what's going on and where things are going on. But everybody's good wherever Allah has put them inshaAllah. <coughs> Sayyidi, is it bad to be excited about the end times and the calamities coming to end the satanic kingdom and kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad coming to earth? Yeah, <coughs> I don't know if, it, if it's uh, the, uh, the term to be to be happy but we are, we, are, we are happy with the judgment of our Lord. That Allah said the best of nations would be the nations in the last days for the difficulties they would face and the immensity of love they would have for Sayyidina Muhammad and that they would be immense lovers of Prophet Prophet described to his companions that the nation in the last days they would be my ahbab and the, the holy companions they were shocked and they said, I thought we're your lovers. They said, no you're my sahabi, I'm with you and of course you, you, you love me and following me, you, you're, you're with me. A nation is coming in the last day that they have never seen me and they would give everything in their life for one glance. One glance of me, they are my ahbab. They give everything in the way of Prophet And that's a title that Allah has, has granted for the nation of the last days to be ahbab and Nabi to be lovers. We pray that Allah grant us that title, grant us that reality to make us to be from Ashiqeen and Ahbab and Nabi And only Allah come and teach that the time that Prophet described that to the holy companions, their spiritual ruhaniyat were at that time ordered to keep a nazar because of their love for Prophet he described to them the immensity of love and their immense love for Prophet to make him happy. They all lent their ruhaniyat and their souls to keep their spiritual nazar on, on the nation that Prophet had shown them. He showed them that these are the souls of, of the ones who will be coming in last days and they're my lovers. And as a result those Sahabi kiram their nazar is attached to those souls. So from that time their nazar has been watching us, dressing us, blessing us. The Prophet loves you and you love Prophet and we give our support for you to reach the destiny that you have to reach. So that Prophet ridan satisfaction to be dressed upon you. 
So it's an immense blessing that alhamdulillah anybody should feel as the highest gift that Allah can give to creation is that gift of love and the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad the attention of Ashab and Nabi to be upon us, the attention of Ahlul Bayt to be upon us. For that alhamdulillah and the only thing we pray that Allah's mercy and rahmah be upon any type of punishment and difficulty and the extent of difficulty that will be coming onto this earth, the extent of death and, and perishing that comes upon this earth. We pray that Allah be with us all and all our loved ones and children and family and communities with the immense rahmah and mercy and keep us under the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah ila Nabi sallallahu kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqata nashbandiyyat al-aliyya wa sayr wa sadatina fi siddiqina al-fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.